As colder weather put an end to your garden, or perhaps you live in a place where you're not able to garden because you don't have a yard to garden in. Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk about ways you can grow vegetables indoors. Looking around, I find the sea. I think I need a change. The rat race I want to flee, my world I'll rearrange. I'm getting back to the roots of how it's meant to be. Growing gardens, picking fruit, racing livestock, living free. Hello and welcome to the Modern Homesteading Podcast. My name is Harold Thornbro, joined again by Rachel Jamison. How you doing today, Rachel? Pretty good. A little bit <laughs> cold. Cold? Is it cold in Michigan? We've been getting snow. It's cold here too. Yeah. Snow? Uh, we had a little bit. It spit some snow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we ain't going to accumulation or anything, but yeah, it's cold. Oh, we haven't either. Just on the cars, not in the not in the yard. So things are changing on your homestead. So are you finding plenty of homesteading tasks to still do, even though it's cold outside? Oh snowing? yeah, I still have I still have a four by eight bed of carrots in the ground. <laughs> really? Yes. Um. So are you going to harvest those? Are you going to leave some of them in, or what are you going to do? I've been harvesting them slowly, just when I have time to preserve them. I've been fermenting and canning them. So, but they'll. They'll be fine as long as the ground doesn't freeze too much. Right now, it's not frozen, so. No no deer yet? You know, since we got the dog, we haven't had deer in the yard. When we I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about oh, that. that. I'm talking about yeah. your husband's been out deer hunting, hasn't he? <sighs> no. Oh, he hasn't. No. Okay. I seen you guys yeah, just putting up the blind yeah. or taking the blind he, out he, the other day. He wishes we did, we, but we've had some family matters going on, well, and he hasn't had time. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. I've I've only made it out a couple times myself. I haven't had much of a chance. I've been pretty busy. Well, we went to Florida last week for a little oh, yes. four days away from home, and that was kind of nice. And I got a nice, nasty sunburn and all that good stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> A reminder of your vacation. Yeah, yeah. I've been dealing with that a little bit. But I was able to get out. And yesterday, I finished cleaning up a lot of the garden beds. I got all the tomato plants out of the ground. I got all the pepper plants out of the ground. I cut down all the corn stalks. I did, I pruned, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, elderberry bushes back and took a bunch of cuttings I off saw of those. That and I was jealous. Got a bunch. <laughs> I got, I probably took about a hundred or so cuttings off of different elderberry bushes. And last year I popped a bunch. I had one raised bed. I just dedicated to those. And I just put them all in there and probably about, I think I probably put close to a hundred in there and probably 90% of them uh wow. rooted and leaved and i started plopping them everywhere and i'm going to do the same thing with these and or most of these and but i can send some your way if you need i'm some. thinking a road trip or something <laughs> I, I can some. i don't I, have any i think they would uh go through the mail just fine if you want i some. think they would i would <laughs> i would totally love that because i i um I don't know why, but when I ordered trees this year, I didn't think about ordering elderberry. You don't have any elderberries on either property? Not one. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. I'm going to hook you up no. with some then. I'll get you some cuttings. <laughs> yeah. They're so easy to, to, I mean, nothing roots as easy as an elderberry either. I just put it in the ground and it just goes. It's amazing. Wow. I, I still never... have to bring in my fig trees. I don't have them planted outside. Next year, I will plant them outside. Okay. I, I haven't done anything. Mine's still out there and it's cold. And like I said, I got a couple of figs this year and I, to be honest, I really haven't done a lot of research on what the best way to maintain those trees are in this climate. I just don't know. Yeah. I've seen something about people. Some people cut them down, cut them to the ground. That's so they become more do. of a bush. Yeah. I've seen some people that don't. So I don't really know yet. Yeah. I'm going to turn mine more into bushes, but um, I just need to bring them inside for another year until I figure out what I'm going to do with them. To be honest with you, it was kind of a whim. And I really were very much on the edge of them being a perennial. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm really, I'd have, I have to find a warm spot, I think for them to go maybe against the garage. Yeah. I wasn't even sure they would work yeah. here and I've got mine kind of, I mean, they're on the South end of the property. So they're in direct sun all day long. 
and there's nothing blocking or anything, but I didn't put it up against any kind of a, a thermal mass or anything like you said, a house or a garage or something like that, yeah. which would help probably, but I didn't. And I just don't really know. I mean, it's, it's a cold, hardy right. uh, Chicago uh, fig. Six, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of on the border though, 5B, 6A. Um, yeah. So it's questionable, but th- like I said, I got a couple of figs this year. So when it's first I mean, year, I planted grow it. them in pots. Yeah. Mine are in pots. They're in 25 gallon pots. So they could probably stay there, but yeah, there are challenges to these climates for sure. And there's just some things we can't uh, grow well, or some things we can't grow at all, right. but that kind of brings us to our topic today. We're going to talk about indoor vegetable gardening. What I, in permaculture, we call the, the zone zero garden or the zone zero permaculture zone. Um, it's the stuff that's closest to you every day. And in the wintertime in, in our climates and in much of the United States, uh, that's where you have to turn to if you're going to do a lot of growing in the wintertime. You, you have to start moving whatever you want for just fresh food has to be grown inside in some way, shape or form. And we're going to talk about some different methods uh, for doing that, some is some is super super simple, and some is a little bit more complex for sure, uh, and takes some practice. But uh, I thought we'd just start out with probably. I feel like it's probably just the most straightforward thing, and that's just an indoor grow bed. I mean, you're doing that, right? Yeah, I don't use any. I don't use wicking beds or any of the water type methods to grow. I literally mm-hmm. just I use it just like I would outside, but in a pot. I grow in soil. Okay. Yeah. So you literally just set up just just normal pots and plant just plant vegetables in them. Now, what kind of vegetables Um, under grow lights? Okay. I have so this year I'm trying peppers because I had those special peppers that I dug up out of the garden, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm bringing them inside. So I'm going to try those and I'm going to start new ones. So peppers, you can. I've read that you can. I have not done it yet. That you can grow me inside because they're self-pollinating. Yeah. So you can do that inside. I do have grow lights. Um, so I will need to use those just because they require sun. And we, I don't know about you, but we haven't seen the sun in like five or six days. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, yeah, you got to have good lighting. I mean, there's some requirements, yeah. same requirements as outside. You need, you need good soil. You need. Yeah. Uh, temperatures that are suitable which you're going to have that inside you need uh obviously water and you need lights uh some kind of a light source if they can't some people may have an area with a you know a big area of windows that can give it plenty of light but most people and unless you just got a great setup you're probably going to have to put some grow lights on it yeah and i think yeah. peppers and tomatoes both are self-pollinating and those you could probably both do but you're gonna to have to leave your grow lights on for a pretty long time. Now, what I have done several times the last three years in a row, we've grown lettuce, bok choy. Um, I've grown, well, I don't know if you wanted to get into that, but I grow microgreens, sprouts. Yeah, we'll get into that in a few minutes. We'll stick with the uh, grow beds right now. Yeah. But that's what I've done so far. I haven't mostly, mostly greens, mostly lettuces and Mm -hmm. greens and, um, I haven't done a lot of other stuff. Herbs, some herbs. I was going to say herbs too. Yeah. In the past, yeah. what I did was I was trying to, when I first started homesteading, uh, I just wanted to have lettuce every day. I wanted to have a salad every day, you know? So I was all through the winter and, and how I was doing that at first was I'd actually built some uh, two by four. I mean, I just, so I, it was four inches deep of soil is all it was uh, beds in my basement, oh, right yeah. on the concrete in our basement. And I just filled them up level four inches of soil deep and I grew lettuce in them. And I mean, this was literally, I had a full, well, I just had one for the longest time. I had one full length, four by eight, two by four bed (laughs) filled with potting soil in my basement with two of those square uh, LED grow lights hanging over. Well, at first, actually, at first I had fluorescent uh, lights over the top of the, uh, I did a fluorescent deal. And then I finally got some grow lights and, and. Both worked actually well for lettuce and I grew lettuce in those for quite a while. I mean, for, I think the first three years, I just grew lettuce down there all winter like that. Um, And that worked really well. Did you find that a specific variety worked better? Like iceberg or romaine or loose leaf? Well, I didn't grow head lettuce. It was definitely all loose leaf lettuce. It was, uh, I can't remember, uh, Simpson 
Oh, Black Seeded uh, Simpson. Black Seeded Simpson was one of them. I did grow some. Um, <laughs> I just went blank on the types. I did. There was like three different kinds I found were working best down. And now I can't remember what they were. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, they all did really good, uh, pretty well. Just those were faster growing varieties, which was nice because right. I could just keep them rotated in and out. And what I would usually do is just harvest it. I do like the the four foot rows this way at you know width wise and i'd have several of them and i just did like crop rot i, I just do succession planting in that bed through okay. the whole winter just like that and it worked really well and how um, did you growing it in a bed like that because i grow mine in pots which have i put plastic pot like a plastic pot catcher under like you do in indoor plants mm -hmm. under them so how did you control moisture obviously you didn't have a overflow well there is a we have a, our basement set up the way it's set up it's just a concrete floor and there's a drain right okay. there next to it and so i just watered and didn't worry about it and then we had to do dehumidifier down there that just kind of kept the rest of the room from getting getting damp or anything and it okay. you know so any excess just flowed down to that drain and i literally built it six inches away from that drain and it just okay. you know whatever went on the concrete floor went right down the drain and so you used like um did you use wood or did you use fabric I just had the wood frame and I just <laughs> right on the concrete and, and it wasn't probably the best way to do it, but it worked great for, you know, it, well, you grew lettuce. So. We was, I was growing lettuce all year and I go down there and just pick lettuce. And then once I got a greenhouse, I started growing it out in the greenhouse in the winter time. And I never went back to doing that, but you're right. Pots are an easier way to do that, you know, up in your house or whatever, uh, it, right. out of a basement. Um, but I was looking for an abundance of food, you know, this first yeah. few years. Well, now and, they have, various sizes of grow bags mm -hmm. i mean you yes. can get square short squatty grow but i mean you can get huge ones it's crazy to me i did use grow bags my first year and i don't know about where you guys live and it probably depends on your basement but ours gets really dry and i found that with the grow bags stuff dried out so fast yeah so i had i went i switched back to the plastic pots mm -hmm. well yeah, I would think that grow bags, even if I guess you could do them in a basement like I was doing, but um, they leak a lot of water, though, I think. They do. They uh, do. Yeah, if you just water them, you'd have to have some kind of a tray under them or something. Right. Um, I mean, for most people, I think just having, like you said, a re regular pot, planter pot uh, that you would grow yeah. anything in would probably be a good way. And you it, just because it's round and doesn't look like a raised bed, it's, it's the same thing. It works the same way. You fill it with soil. And you yep. put your seeds in it and you grow. And there's just some things that are going to grow good. Leafy greens, because they're not going to require as much sunlight. Stuff that fruits exactly. is definitely going to require more light. Right. Um, but any kind of leafy green would, would well, do really it well. Well, if a pollinator, you're probably not going to have that. I mean, yes. Yeah. But let's talk about the the soil problem. You have some experience I've with done that. This, <laughs> I've done this in the past. So, and I did it this year and I shouldn't have, but I didn't know what else to do. So I dug up those peppers because I have my special peppers. I've talked about mm -hmm. over and over my, black, what are they? My Texas birdhouse. I think they're birdhouse. My Texas bird peppers. Anyways, they're, um, I dug up the soil. So it's a possibility I'm going to end up having some pests flying around, which is what I've done in the past. I've had a fly issue after I brought soil inside <laughs> from outside. You swore you wasn't going to do that this year. I know it, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you usually don't want to bring any soil that you're using outside inside because it harbors eggs and bugs and all kinds of things. Usually, you say flies. What I had a problem with was aphids. Uh, aphids oh. came in with them really bad. Nice. Um, it can bring gnats in, lots of stuff. I mean, it can yeah. it can definitely you can bring the problems in uh, from outdoors. Um, it's best to use a sterile soil uh, or a store bought potting soil that's been sterilized or something like that, uh, so you don't have those issues. Uh, but you can do it. You're just there's a risk in it because it's do probably as I has say and not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had this conversation about you doing that before. And I, I did yeah. the same thing when I brought it in my basement. I was using the soil right out of my raised beds. I brought some of it in, put it down there. I was like, oh, I worked too hard on this soil. I want to use this soil. This is good stuff. Right. And uh, sure enough, it brought the problems in. And it was, like I said, it was aphids with me. Uh, it became a real issue. Yeah, last year I used, and I really liked it. Um is called the happy frog. Have you ever used that happy frog soil potting yes. soil? Yes. Yeah, I have. Yeah, you can get it locally here at like our 
Blaine's. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have a Blaine's down there. It's like no. And, it's like a farm store, farm and fleet. And then I can also get it at the grocery store. Okay. Um, which is actually where I get pots. Now, I don't know if anybody, if you have a grocery store, this is, I think it's geared more toward indoor growers that grow marijuana, but they have, for me, at least here, they're actually really affordable. Like you can go in and get tons of different shapes and sizes of pots and beds and amendments. And usually they're organic and they have pallets of uh, the happy frog. And that's also where I get my pots. Cause you can get everything from a one gallon pot up to a 25 gallon pot. Oh, wow. And they're nice and sturdy, like heavy duty ones. So, nice. Well, yeah. If you can't or don't want to spend the money on a potting soil, you can sterilize your soil yourself. Yeah. Um, you can put it in pans and throw it in the oven, actually, yeah. and heat it up and sterilize your soil. I mean, there's a method to that, too. You know and that temperature? I don't. That's what I was getting ready to say. If you if a person just wants to look that up, I mean, a, a Google search will find that real yeah. quick. But you can you can sterilize it yourself in an oven. Um, and it'll, it'll work. It'll be fine. I mean, you might want to throw some compost or something on it. Uh, if you do that, I would think, um, right. yeah. I've never done that actually, but I, I mean, I've heard it works, um, to get, it'll, obviously it's going to kill any of the stuff that's in the, in the soil. Right. I would think that's all you have to do is just get it hot enough to, to, to kill. I would think so. I mean, I mean also re inoculate it with some mycorrhizae and something. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Uh, because also, I mean, not just bugs could be your problem, but you could have some some uh some kind of a fungus in there or some you know there could be some something in there that could spread you know uh blight or anything could be in that soil that could affect any, your plants inside um right that's something uh, something to think about with peppers about. right <laughs> yes oh, yeah because uh, yeah, that could be something that could affect peppers or something if you had some soil like that but if you didn't have a problem with it outside you probably won't have a problem inside either have, but yeah this year actually was a other than me having issues with the oh shoot i can't remember japanese beetles oh yeah you had those this year we yeah, we had yeah. zero blight they this year which is the so bad and he, well but i didn't have any blight issues that was the only thing we yeah. had issues with was the japanese normally we have blight here and didn't have it this year but it was so dry that it just yeah i think that helped that's what happened here too I'm glad the Japanese beetles moved on up to your place because I'll tell you what, I had them here a few years ago. <laughs> I <laughs> decimated. Have plans, I have plans of making wren houses and everything else that will eat Japanese beetles. Houses everywhere. I will say, I only had them really bad one year and then they just kind of moved yeah. on. I, yeah, I hope. I mean, I'm sure they just kind of travel around in, in cycles or something, maybe. I I'm don't know. Hoping, I'm hoping so because they were so bad everywhere. And yeah, I did it. Out at our property, but even here at our house. I was just, it maybe it's four years ago. I did a property tour. It was when I did that property tour on your YouTube and I was going around and they were just on everything. I mean, I was just, even on the, on the video, I was walking around just smashing them. They were just everywhere. Yep. It was really bad. And then I, I think I aggravated the situation by actually hanging some of those traps. And you can't that do bad. that if you have a small property because it will actually just yes. draw them to your property. You, you have to hang them. So what I need to do is hang them on my neighbor's property. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, I have heard that. I was going to get traps and then I read that the pheromone traps actually I should have done some bring reading. them to yeah, you. Yeah, they so. did. It, it, it aggravated the situation. It made it. I mean, I hung those up and it was like a couple days later, I had 10 times more on my property. Yeah. It was bad it was so bad yikes uh yeah. what kind of uh lights are you using on your indoor grow pits i'm using i put a link in there but i'm using you? the barina i think that's what you call them barina yeah the barina grow lights yeah yeah i've used so i have but i first also started with fluorescent mm-hmm. once and then switched over to the led just because the electric bill mm-hmm. And they're those barinas. I don't know if you've used those, but they're so I have them. Yeah. easy. They're so light, and you can move them around. Yep. And I, um, we've used zip ties to put them on hanger. I mean, we've kind of moved them all over the place, yeah. and they're so light and easy to use that you can kind of shove them anywhere. Do you have the red ones or the white ones? 
I have the white ones. <laughs> I have the they red ones. Me crazy. <laughs> yeah, the red ones. I have the red ones, and they are there is a very unique glow with those things that light up a whole room with this red glow. And I wish I'd bought the white ones. Yeah, I don't think they were available when I bought the red. I think when the, they came out with the red ones first. Um, I, I, I guess I don't. I never ran across them anyway. So I and, have uh, the ones I put in there, and I have four foot long, long ones too. Yeah, mine are. Mine are two feet long, are they but small? but they hook together like you, they have a cable yes. that hooks them together in series, so you can make them as long as you want. You can like hook several of them together, yeah. so that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, super I, easy. I use them over my aquaponics is what I use them over, which okay. works really well, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But so yeah, if you get you some, which are they're super super affordable. And the reason I was using fluorescents in the early days is because the LED grow lights were crazy expensive that's back in the day, here. yeah, and they just kept yeah. going down in price and they got to where they were super affordable to where they're really, they are almost dead even with a fluorescent setup now, as far as what yeah. they cost. And the electricity is and, less. And like yep. I said, there's these, at least the way they have these ones designed, like you said, you can run as many mm -hmm. as you want. Like I have, I have eight, four foot ones. And I think I have four of the one foot ones and you can have two of them in succession or one of yeah. them in succession or all of them. And I mean, they're just really easy to make bigger or smaller. And I really like that. I yeah, have mine on a timer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can put a link in the show notes for a good timer too. Which one do yeah. you, what, what, what ones do you use? You just bought some cheap. I just cheap. used one that I found at like Home Depot or okay, something. Okay. Yeah. You can put them on a timer set I would up not and... recommend the one we got because we got, Okay. Okay. School. It was probably like a clearance thing. You know, we got this old school one where you have to go, you have to like push the little timer down for every oh, hour of the 20. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. yeah. I have a digital, I have a couple digital ones that yeah. work pretty well. Um, I have had two of those fail on me though. So really? I will definitely suggest a probably a little bit more expensive one. These ones are wow. pretty cheap digital ones, and they both I've had two of them fail on me. One of them failed to turn on. One of them failed to turn off. It oh. just stayed on, which was weird. So that was different. Yeah. yeah. Which then less damage. Makes it. And so the other thing I bought, which I haven't used yet, and I'm determined to use this year, was I bought an automatic water. Really? Okay. That'll yeah, be neat. With like the little drip things connected to them. Uh huh. And um, just so that when I get like either super busy or if we're going to go away for a few days, I didn't have to worry. About Are you, is that hard plumbed in or is it something you just fill up in a you tank a or five gallon bucket? Oh, okay. It has a pump yeah. and everything. Then? So I don't, I don't want to put it in the links because I haven't used it yet and I couldn't right. see whether or not it works, but I'm going to try it. And if it works, I guess I'll. Is it gravity it feed or does it pump it out of the bucket? It's actually pumped. So okay. Be, nice. It would have to be plugged in and on the timer as well. Nice. Yeah. I like yeah. that. That, that would make yeah. a lot better. Especially. It definitely. I mean, you get busy for me. Mine's down in the basement. I don't have much else down there. You mm -hmm. get busy. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've found that my basement is not my zone zero. <laughs> my my right. basement is like my zone three. If anybody doesn't know anything about permaculture, it's like you label those zones and the places you frequent more, most often, which is like your house is generally your zone zero. But the basement of my house is not zone zero. Exactly. I rarely go down there, except for when I have something like a grow bed or something down there. I, I, I go down there once a month, right. maybe otherwise. So you know, it would not be my zone zero actually <laughs> normally. Yeah. So you yeah. would tend to forget about that. Yeah. Well, and that's what happens with me or, you know, like I said, I wanted to be able to go away and, yeah. and, um, you know, go away for a weekend or go away for the holidays and absolutely. Yeah. Well, so there you have water, light, good soil, uh, <laughs> And, yes. uh, uh, you know, a pot or a bed or some something, any kind of container to uh, grow it in. And you sprinkle some seeds on there. And I, I suggest starting out with something like lettuce because it's just super, super easy to grow. Um, like yeah. you said, bok choy is pretty easy. Uh, um, I don't know. There's a few things that grow really, really well. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's short uh, growing times, um, leafy greens. Have you ever grown kale or anything like that? No, I'm the only one that eats kale and uh, my, the kale here, I still have kale. It'll grow through the snow. So I yes, just me too. The, the only thing I left in my garden is chard and kale. That's the only thing I, I got in my garden right now. Garden. I mean, even <laughs> I, it takes a lot to kill kale. And yeah. honestly, I've had kale come back three years before. So 
I don't ever give it a chance to come back, but I definitely go out there and kick the snow off of it to pick it and eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's I did amazing. Just because I was like, wow, that thing lived through one year. Let's see if it'll live through another. Yeah. Chard does the same thing. I, yeah. I have the same experience with chard. It's like that stuff yeah. is just bulletproof with the weather, it seems like. It, is. it is just keeps producing. So yeah. have you ever grown from cuttings? So like um you buy a, you have a head of lettuce and you peel it all off and then you regrow it. Have you ever done any of that? I, I've done it just as an experiment playing around with it. It's not something I've done regularly. I did put something in my greenhouse one time and grew it. Uh, I did that with that. I've done it with onions. I've done it with, um, uh, I've done it with a few things. I just can't remember. I definitely have done the, uh, celery. I've done celery that way. I've done a few things like that. Yeah. Just yeah. trying it out. You see the, you see the, uh, little, Facebook posts and stuff where someone does it. It's like, okay, right. I'm gonna try that. So, so you got to pop some in. Few, I've done that a yeah. few times for the in the soil, not in water, in soil. Because mm-hmm. I still feel like soil is life. So I will cut it off and get it to root again in water in the kitchen so I can watch it and stuff. And then once it gets roots on it, I have put it right in the right in the pot down in the basement under the lights. And um I we got I think the best success we had with a lettuce was butter crunch. Yeah. That's one of them. I was trying to think of earlier. That's definitely one of yeah, them. That's, it just, it was really good. And we were able to pull off. We just kept cutting the outside leaves off mm-hmm. and um, it just kept growing. I actually had really good leaf uh, luck with romaine also. That was another one that I had that did really well. It's just different. You know, it grows, you can plant it really, really thick and pick it almost like a large microgreen. You know, when it's growing that's with the regrowing or with no, not with the regrowing. I'm sorry. I thought we were just talking about, uh, yeah, you're right with the regrowing. No, that was just with seeds. You know, I'm just saying I've had the out of the three I planted, it was this black seeded Simpson, the, the butter crunch and the, uh, the romaines, the three I was having the best luck with. That's what it was. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I was just thinking like for people that are afraid to start from seed Mm -hmm. or didn't have seed, you can so easy with some things. Yeah, it is. It is. Although I've never had amazing success with iceberg. No, I I don't have a lot of success with, yeah, head lettuce doesn't do well here for some reason. I don't know. I've not had a lot of luck with it either. Um, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I've tried it a couple of times and it just doesn't do good. So have I, yeah. and I don't, it's probably, I mean, I'm sure it's me. And my but, wife loves that. She loves, you know, the head lettuce. She That's what she prefers yes. when it comes to lettuce. But yeah, I can't, I don't know. It's something we just have trouble Growing. That's what my family prefers too is the heavens. Yeah. And I have not been able to get it to do wonderful. And I, I'm sure it's me and I'm doing something wrong. But. I've never tried growing it indoors. I wonder if it would do better indoors or I, you know, that it bring, well, we'll talk about it here in a few minutes when we get to aquaponics, but I, that might be something I might try in my greenhouse aquaponics system because oh. I've seen head lettuce in aquaponics systems and it seems to do pretty well. Is it because it just needs more water? I'm I think so. Not watering it enough. Maybe. Huh. Uh, well, let's move on to the next thing that people can do this. I find actually I'm going to skip. I know we have an order here in my notes, but I want to go to sprouting because it's okay. kind of like the beginner more yeah. so than microgreens. We'll get to microgreens in a minute, but it's the gateway to lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've done a lot of sprouting before, yeah. haven't you? Okay. Yes. I've, I've actually, I skipped straight to microgreens pretty much, uh, with, and, and skipped over sprouting. Uh, well, that's not true. I did sprouting, but for my rabbits with sunflower seeds, Oh, okay. uh, I guess I did do that. Uh, but I, for consumption, my own consumption, I didn't do sprouting. Uh, so why don't you tell me how you did sprouting in the house? So how I do it was, it's just with a Mason jar and a screen mm-hmm. and I soak them for 24 hours. And then after that, I rinse them two or three times a day until they're sprouts okay and it's pretty it's pretty simple i bought my seeds um oh shoot i was gonna do that i have a favorite (laughs) seed company i have a favorite seed but my some of my favorite mixes for that are broccoli sunflower radish arugula onion um and just like a they have like a salad almost all of the companies have like a salad mix. a mixed uh yeah. sprouting mix yeah but i love um sunflower but the sunflowers are a pain because you have to there's the, seed. the holes yeah yeah the yeah holes but with everything else like broccoli and radish they're a little bit spicy and 
Mm-hmm. I just really like them. But those are what you see. I think typically people would see like in the grocery store in the clamshell plastic. Yeah. Um, that has the two starter leaves, like the baby leaves on it. And all the way to the root is what you eat with that, as opposed mm-hmm. to the microgreens where you cut it. Yeah. So um, this is like the whole thing, including you'll get the little tiny seeds. Okay. So yep. no soils involved. Nope, no soil. Really, you don't need a lot of light either. No, because there's a not. lot of energy in the seed enough to make it yep. sprout. Yep. Um, so basically it's moisture and temperature. Yeah, and then clean make it water. go. I mean, I don't know yeah. if I I mean I don't live in the city anyways, but if I had city water, I don't know how well they'd do, but you know, you might want to use filtered water. Yeah, I well, yeah, I would definitely use filtered yeah. water. Um uh, but, but yeah, it's so super, super easy. I mean, in fact, a lot of grocery stores even sell like, especially organic kits. grocery stores, they sell like a whole kit, like, yeah, a, you know, the lid, but, um, I have stainless steel ones just so they don't rust, but I actually started with like, I actually started with screen material. Okay. So, so let me get it right now. You take the jar and you put your water and your seeds in the jar. Okay. And then you put a screen around the top of it and just maybe like a rubber band or something to hold it on. Yep. Rubber band or a Mason jar. Oh, uh, uh, the ring. Yeah. Ring. Yeah. Put yep, a ring yep. on it. And then you, how long do you soak it for again? I usually soak them for 24 hours, 24 hours. And you pour the yep. water out I pour right the through water the screen, through the screen. And then I pour the water back in through the screen and I'll do that. Okay. I'll rinse those. I'll fill it completely up, kind of shake it. Cause once they get a little bit bigger, they kind of get into a clump. Yeah. So I kind of shake it to make sure the water gets in there and I will rinse it until it gets clear. Okay. A couple of times you fill it, shake it, dump it. You do that two or three times till your water is clear. And then I will do that two to three times a day. Okay. And then just so you don't get, cause they will get funky Kind of funky if you let them sit around without rinsing. How how long until they're ready to eat from the time you started? I mean, you can eat them probably at any time after they sprout. You can start to eat them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. Okay. But usually, That's, two or so three simple. days. Some of those with some of those like alfalfa and some of those, it does not take much for them to sprout. Like literally, you'll see little babies the next morning after the first soak. Yeah. You'll see little. Hairs. They germinate really fast. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they're, I just think they're great. Like you add them to your salad, you add them to, you can just eat them plain. People add them to sandwiches. And the, the nutrition, the nutritional yeah. value of sprouts and microgreens is really big because there's just yes. like this energy in that seed that has come forth. And it's like, they're at their peak nutrition level right? Uh, when they're sprouts or microgreens. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I think. I could be wrong, but I think nutrition wise, the sprout actually has less than the microgreen. I think so. It's got, because it develops the true leaf. It's got a little bit more because it developed the true leaf. Yeah. Yeah. And there's soil on on microgreens, which probably brings up a little bit. Are a little bit more um, advanced. You need a few things. With this, you just, you need a jar and a counter. And when I, so after I've rinsed them, I usually sit them on the counter on a towel with like a rolled up towel. So they're kind of half inverted at like a 45 degree angle. So they keep draining. Okay. So they're not sitting in water. So they drain completely. Now okay. they have more fancy kits than this. You can buy yeah. um, kits that kind of stack on top of each other. And yeah. I've seen drain, those. Yeah. Um, but this is like the cheapest method you can use. Yeah. And it, they're just great for, like you said, adding to a salad, putting on a sandwich, just yep. eating them. Maybe if you just want to munch on something, yeah, just yeah. throw something around. The, you know, yeah. Well, and, uh, or you can feed them to your animals. Or your yeah. Now that's where I got into with feeding or, rabbits. Yeah. I had a, a setup where I made with four trays and I would put sunflower seeds in the top three. Well, actually I'd start with one. And then what I do, they had holes drilled in the bottom of them. And then I had a very bottom catch pan and I would just dump water in twice a day. I would dump it in in the morning. It would run through all the pans. Hits. And what I would do is I'd rotate it down. I, that one now is one day. So I'd go to the second uh, level on my stand 
and I'd put a fresh tree of them on the top. And then again, the next day I would do the same thing. So now the ones at the bottom were three days in, and now the next day they're ready to come out. They're four days and they're sprouted and they're, you know, five inches tall, four or five inches tall. And I would just slice those up and feed them to the rabbits. And then I just had this constant rotation and I just, I dump a, a pitcher of water in the morning, a pitcher of water in the evening, it'd run through and that's all I would do. And, and I had this constant uh, flow of uh, seeds for the uh, food for the rabbits. I remember you doing that. Did you make a blog post or a video? I, I had a video about it. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what yeah, happened to that video. That. <laughs> I don't even remember what I did with that, but it worked really, really well. I and I bought those trays that after that, that, yeah, you I think I went down and got the trays at like a dollar store or something. Oh, and I, and I made the stand, I made the stand out of a, uh, out of PVC. Yeah, I remember. And that. it fit in there just right now. You're probably thinking of the microgreen trays that I, Maybe I, I that's was, what it was. Yeah, I, I have a blog post that. on that. Yeah. yeah. I remember Gravity that. fed. Yeah, it went right through yeah. it. It worked super good. And like I said, I would and I would just go down to like Rule King or wherever big box store and buy the like 50 pound bag of sunflower seeds for bird seed that they sell real cheap, just dirt cheap. And I could, you know, one bag of those and I could feed the rabbits, you know, <laughs> for months, for a couple months on that so in the winter time so it was super uh economical to do, to do that for, we did that method for chickens not as fancy as you we actually did a jack spearco's method with the five gallon bucket. five gallon bucket yeah yeah that. we did that with sunflowers for the chickens and they loved it yep yeah it, it ferments a little bit if you leave it a little longer too for the for the chickens yeah. Yeah. So that that's my experience with, with sprouting. It wasn't for my own consumption. It was for that. But I, I actually going to be honest with you, I think I'm going to do some of that, even though I grow microgreens and also have other stuff. I just like the idea that, of the simplicity of just having a jar of sprouts and how quick it could be just to have access to yeah. them right there on your kitchen counter whenever you want some. Well, and each one, I mean, each there's so many different varieties, but each one has their own vitamin and nutritional mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on which one you get with the alfalfa or the broccoli you know just so many yeah. different variants there well as we get into microgreens we'll switch over to microgreens here and start talking about microgreens but i buy like a seed mix and it's got like radish and broccoli and it's got like a five different six different seeds in it and i like that one the best because it's just you got a little bit of everything get some variety and it, it all seems to grow pretty good together um for the microgreen tray i assume right. you could use those for sprouting the same Probably. Um, but I, I like them. They work really good. Uh, but with microgreens, it's a little bit more complex. It ain't bad. It's not hard, but you are using soil. You have to have some tray setups. Uh, they do like some sunlight when they get a little bit taller, they will, they will germinate and sprout without the sunlight, but they, right. to get to a full microgreen level, they need some light, uh, unlike sprouting. Um, I have a nice shelf set up right in front of a window in my kitchen and I keep uh, four all winter. I keep four uh, microgreen trays on that shelf and I just rotate them out. And every like three days, I, we harvest one of them, start it over again, put it at the bottom and just keep them going and keep a really nice uh, flow of uh, microgreens. And that's a lot. That's, that's more than four or five people can eat. <laughs> now what's, Size are your trays and did you buy those or make those? I bought these trays. They were actually sprouting trays on Amazon. They call them sprouting okay. trays. And what they are is they're they're a green tray. This is probably what you saw because I have a blog post on it. it and I will put the blog post in the um in the uh uh show notes, but I think I also did a video on it as well that I share in the blog post, if I remember right, or maybe I just shared some pictures. I can't remember. And does it have a link to those trays? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I have a link Hopefully to the trays. Around, Cause this was a while ago that you did. This yeah. Thing. And I think they're still around, uh, they, yeah. but they're a two layer tray. They have a, the solid tray yeah. on the bottom and then they have a tray with holes in it. that goes in the top. Like I said, that's for sprouting. Cause that's actually sits down in water. Yeah. And like you would it'd be like basically the screen on top of the Mason jar, right. To get them out of the water. But what I do is I lay a paper towel down on those screens, on those, uh, the, on the top tray with the holes in it. I just lay a paper towel down and then I put soil on that about one inch deep, not very much at all. Maybe about an inch, maybe not even an inch of soil, just enough to, to cover it. And then I sprinkle my seeds on there. Now those trays actually come with a dome lid also for, you can put that on there and it'll help them germinate a little quicker. You don't have to, I've done it without them, but you can use that dome lid, set it on there. It'll sprout, germinate a little quicker pop up and I usually get rid of it just because you don't want no mildew or anything. I want some airflow on them after that, just to get good air, you know, keep it from having any kind of mildew. Um, and 
and I just keep this rotation going like that. And it's just super quick. And then when I'm done, I just dump that soil because it'll have the, you, when you harvest microgreens, you cut them at the, at right above the yes. soil. And I just take that soil and I throw it in my compost bin because it's got all those roots and stuff in it and pull that paper towel out, clean it all up, start another tray. It takes about 10 minutes to get another tray going. And I just keep the rotation going like that. Super, super easy. Yeah. That's exactly how I do it. Except for I have used coffee filters in the past just because they're cheap. But um, I like the paper towel idea just because it's square. I yeah. If it's in there perfect, I usually have to use like well, two of them. Those and are like eight, four by eight, maybe something like those that. trays. They're like, they're like yeah, they're eight by, I think they're nine by 11 or something like oh, that. Oh, yours are bigger than mine, I think. Yeah. They're, they're pretty good size. I mean, they're not big, okay. big, but yeah, I think they're, they're close to a foot long. And yeah, I think okay, they're, yours are bigger than mine then. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're decent size. I mean, so it's a lot. Uh, when you harvest that, that's quite a bit. And we'll fill a container up, throw them in the fridge. And three days later, we're harvesting another one. You know, so do you use, do you pour water over yours or do you spray yours with? Spray oh, water? that, yeah, I need to say that. I actually don't, I, here's the thing. What I do, I water them one time. What I do is I actually marked on the side of all my trays where the water comes up to the very top of where I put soil. Oh. So what I do is I submerge that thing. I put the soil in and the water will come just under the top of that soil, saturate it sprinkle my seeds by the time those seeds are starting to root that water is evaporating and going away and they're using up some of the water and everything else so that water is going down the roots just stretch right through that paper towel right down through the water and just follow the water down and i never have nice. to water them i, I just nice. i leave them alone and so oh. i put the water in them one time and i never worry about it after that that's brilliant okay zero do you watering ever use like have you had problems with mold because i I have not. And, and you've never had to use like the, or what do you call it? I use the, pero I've had to use the peroxide method before, like with a little bit of peroxide in the water. Yeah. I've not had any issues. I, there's enough air. I, like I said, I get rid of the, as soon as they germinate, right. I get the dome off there. So well, I get and I think a decent airflow. And I have them in front of a window. So there's right. plenty of sunlight. And I think that helps keep the water. It probably helps get it out of the soil by the right at the right, right time you know so it doesn't have an extra well, build up of watering moisture from above which i think nope helps. no more yep there's no watering from above yeah so i don't get any of that that's, on the actual greens perfect. it works it works perfect mm -hmm. it really How does deep are your trays the the entire tray is about i'm gonna guess maybe three and a half inches deep but i'm yeah, bringing the water you have different trays in but i'm bringing the water yeah. up maybe it's okay. and you know that top tray sits down in that tray yeah. about halfway so I'm going to say I'm putting maybe an inch and a half of water in it or so uh, to go, come up into the soil, to saturate okay. the soil. Yeah. And then I that's it. Yeah. Yours instead of the ones I have. Mine I'll have, have a link in the show notes. I think it works really well. Shallow. Yeah, these are these are at least three and a half, I would say. But I think they're the same company because I read yours. Are yours like a neon green with white? Yes, with the white I top trays. the same company. Mine are just different ones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. These, they work super good. I mean, like I said, they're not even for microgreens. They're for sprouting, but yep. they work perfect for microgreens. <laughs> they really do. It, it's just a, yeah. the entire set. Like I said, I have a blog post about how I do it exactly. So if anybody's got any questions, just uh, go to the link in the show notes and read the blog post. And it basically, I step, I show it step by step and I even show the progression and times of how long it takes from a sprout and how big they get and all that stuff. So um, you can get all of the information there. And like I said, like uh, probably the same kind of things you're growing, arugula, basil, beets. Uh, you can do the beet seeds, uh, broccoli, I haven't tried cilantro, this. collards. Yeah. We, you can do a lot of different ones in there. So. Well, and where, and do you get your seeds the same place that what is the place you usually get your seeds? Um, hold on. I probably, I probably have that in the I blog thought you post. Got them at your... I think I was getting them from True Leaf Market. That's what I yep. thought. Yeah, True See, Leaf I was Market. getting mine through Amazon and I haven't yes, checked Yes, I actually bought some. I actually have a link in here also from some I got from, from a super, super food microgreen seed mix. Uh, and that's that was off of Amazon. So that was another one I had. And I was using those and that was actually a mixed bag of, uh, this one had kohlrabi, collard, radish, turnip, Bro and broccoli in it and that that one worked really really well also uh but yes true leaf market has some good they have a basic salad micro mix and they got i like the mixes because i like to get the variety but yeah um, depending on what you like there's all kinds but yeah 
like I said, and, and you think, well, you're using soil, you're wasting soil. Well, it just goes in my compost, you know, and it just, it's just more I got for the garden next year. You know, it, it works out great. All winter long, you're dumping that in your compost. And, um, and I think I bought like, I'm using potting soil because again, just like your indoor grow beds, you don't want to use soil from your garden because right. you're going to bring problems in. So I bought, I, I think I probably bought that same kind you were talking about that. Uh, what was it called? The frog, uh, something frog. Oh, happy frog. Yeah. They I think I was using different that. Varieties. Yeah. I'd use an organic soil. Oh, yeah. You can use yep. like nature's care or something like that. There's a few different yep. ones, but just get you a good organic potting soil. And uh, I think I, I had a 50 gallon bag and it lasted me the entire winter. Oh yeah. It Cause it does, doesn't take very much soil at all. Compost. You're adding yeah. your compost. That, that 50 ba- pound bag ended up in my compost with the roots of all the, the microgreens yeah. and everything anyway. So, so the one perfect. I use, I really like is it's called the sprout house. They're organic. And that's what I was getting on. Oh, the, the seeds. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you can drop a link in for that if you want. Yeah, um, I will try that one out. You know, they're, a one pound bag is what I've been getting. And I actually still have some left from last year. I mean, it goes quite a ways. <laughs> yeah. Those, uh, the sprouting trays are Figol, F-I-G-O-A-L, four pack sprouting tray. It was ones I got, uh, it doesn't say their size on. I'm looking at the. Oh yeah. I can look too. I had, here. um. Yeah, they're almost four inches deep. They're 3.9 inches high, so they're yeah, pretty mine deep. Are not that yeah, I thought they were, and they're 12 and a half inches yours, long. There are options, at least with the ones I got, where you can buy an actual like rack to put them on. Yes, I'm on Amazon right now looking at some of those. Yeah, there's some yeah. different ones. Like I said, these aren't even technically microgreen, but I think they work better for microgreens than any of the microgreen trays I've actually seen. These seem to work better. I think why they work better is I don't have to water them. Right. Well, these that's what I like are about 13 them. by nine, but they're only one and a half deep. Oh, so really? Yeah. Quite deeper. a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all the setup that I came up with, I just think works better. Cause like I said, if you're using traditional microgreen trays with putting the oh, soil on the bottoms, expensive. you're going to have to go in and water them, you know, every day, a couple well, times a day. That, and a lot of those, the way they did it traditionally is you have to buy those mats that you put yes. on and right. the paper towel and soil method is definitely. It, it works so easy. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I don't have to pay attention to them until they're ready to harvest. I just do it. Yeah, harvest them. Start another buy tree. Yours <laughs> it works really good. I mean. Yeah. we. So how do you eat your microgreens? Uh, same way. I guess you eat sprouts. I mean, I'm putting them on salads. Now I'll make it. I've actually made an entire sa- uh, salad out of microgreens because yeah. you're getting more leaf. You're getting more than right. sprouts. So you could actually just eat the entire thing like a, like a little Tacos. microgreen salad. Yep. There you go. Tacos, sandwiches. Tacos. Um, what else did we, we have. So one of our favorite ones is sunflower and um, we actually, well, this is totally Seems contrary to being healthy, but we will dip them in butter. They're really sounds, yummy. Sounds good to me. <laughs> dip them in butter. It's like eating. I don't know what it is, but the sunflower is like the texture. It's just like this little buttery, even without adding the butter. They're just really good. They're one of our favorite sprouts. Yeah. 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 I like, I like them. I mean, they have tons of flavor, tons of nutrition. Right, yeah. I mean, they're just, I mean, I think they, they're, the flavor is actually a little bit stronger than a mature plant in most cases. Um, yeah. You just get that big, like, well, you eat the radish, you'll feel that even just in the leaves, you taste oh, that man, radishy taste. Like, you, I mean, yeah. you get, a, you get, a, that's why I like the variety because you don't, over, it, nothing overwhelms you, but you get like this mixture of a bunch of different flavors, which is really nice. So I really like them. Yeah. I know a lot of people use, I mean, tons of people grow microgreens as a side gig. Yeah. Yeah. I've there's a business in it for yet. sure. Yeah. yeah. I've never tried that. I think Curtis Stone has like a whole I think, class that you can take. Yes. Out. And I think the way I do it works really good for homesteading. Yeah. Works really good for your family to have some microns. I think on a commercial level, if you're selling them, probably wouldn't be the best way to do it. Probably not. I, I think then your big microgreen trays, and your shelves and your lighting systems and all the stuff. Yeah. You, you want a better setup. It works perfect for, for a, family use, you know, just to have a constant supply of microgreens all winter long. And, uh, I love that. I mean, I just, like I said, if I'm growing lettuce out in the greenhouse or somewhere else, uh, or, and I'm got, got, I have those going, uh, you know, that's a lot of food you got putting, you can put on the table through the winter time, fresh food, you know, uh, yeah. not just stuff you're pulling out of your pantry. So I like it. 
we can move on now to something I've done one time. Don't know if you've I ever done it. I haven't done any. I, Hydroponics? I have not grown in water other than to re-sprout food that I- I think you and I might have the same issue with it. Uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, hydroponics, it works. And you can definitely put food on your plate. And and in in certain situations, I think it's great. Crack I mean, the cracky were, method is yeah. something that a lot of people do because you can be done in a mason jar, kind of like sprouting. Um, you can just you can get like the little net pots and cut a lid and set it down inside of a mason jar with water. With hydroponics, you're putting the nutrients. You, you buy little packs of nutrition to pour in the water or scoop of something to put in the water, and it supplies all the nutrition for the plant to grow. Um, I don't know why, but I have a little bit of a problem with that. It just doesn't seem natural to me. You know, yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm chemically inducing my food or something. I know I'm, it's not the same thing, but it's just, I, I know I'm not a big fan of hydroponics necessarily. I know some people love it and I, that's fine for you. I, I, I would prefer something that gets its nutrition in a more natural way. Uh, yeah. Sprouting, it's getting it from the energy of the seed microgreens is getting it from that and the soil with even aquaponics it's getting it from the energy seed and nutrition supplied by fish but right. with hydroponics it's getting it from something that you know some yeah. mixture or something you're putting in the water and i don't know a lot about that it's probably fine but in my mind i go i don't know you know it's just like i wanted to see yeah. if i could do it one time with a cracky method but that's all i did one time yeah, I guess for me, I feel like soil is life and there's so much in the soil that we don't even understand yet. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like we can't provide that. However, I think if you live in the city and you're stuck in an apartment, I've seen those really cool grow towers. So, I mean, if yeah. it means you have food. I think that growing hydroponically yourself will provide a better food than what you're going to buy in the store. Yep. That's not organic. And even some of the organic stuff is grown hydroponically yeah, it is so uh it's probably going to be better for you anyway i just feel like if i've got the option to do it in another way i think it's probably even a little bit better so that's why i don't do hydroponics but i did want to lay out that i think it's a viable option for growing food in the winter time and the cracking method is a really easy way to do it because yeah it's, so do you understand how to explain that the difference I, between that and like hydroponic well, I mean, usually it's, again, it's uh, with some setups with hydroponics, you have like a flowing water system. And so there's pumps and involved and there's, you know, it's just a bigger setup with cracky you use a Mason jar and there's no, there's no aerators, there's no pumps, no electricity right. needed. Basically you just set one of the net cups down in a jar. You cut the, the lid out of a Mason jar and you can set the neck, make the, where the net cup fits in it. And you set that down in there and, you start the uh, seed in rock wool. Usually I think you can start it in other ways, yeah. but rock wool is easy and you soak that real good. And the, so the seed will germinate and your roots basically just stretch down into the, the solution, the uh, hydroponic solution that you've put below. And yeah, I mean, like I, I said, it. I mean, it's like, it's like sprouting versus microgreens. It's definitely a little bit of an easier method than doing the uh, hydroponics. Is yeah. There's going to be people yeah. come back at us and say, you don't know nothing about hydroponics. Right, it's right. totally healthy don't. for you. And, and I know the nutrition oh, yeah. solutions are right. probably natural to some extent. I just don't know it much about it, to be honest with you. So oh, I'm not going to knock on it. I just said, it's something I've not put a lot of, I've not right. put a lot of well, and uh, I know study people into. that use it in, um, Texas because mm -hmm. it's a hundred degrees there and they have rock for soil. So, I mean, you know, serves a purpose for some people. We're blessed to have amazing uh, summers with nice soil. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and there's probably people feel the same way about, I grow aquaponics and they would probably say, well, that's not soil right. and you're still doing it. And, but I just feel like there's a, it's a middle ground. Uh, it's nutrition coming from an animal. It's waste, you know, which is what you get in the soil. I mean, you're getting, it's waste from worms and bugs and, you know, you got that in the soil too. So it's the same thing kind of. Um, well, I kind of, I don't grow. So do you grow, when you do aquaponics, are you growing in soil? No. Okay. Cause we, I, we water from the pond and I, I think that's when my garden's successful. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get a lot of nutrients. Food. Yeah. You get a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in that water for sure. Um, no, I have, uh, I use um, a grow medium that, that I put in, in there. Those little pebble thingies. It is. Yeah. They're clay uh, pebbles. Okay. And, uh, 
Uh, they work really good, but I, I still with with hydroponics, you're still going to set up lights. You still got to have grow lights. You you know you have to do a lot of things that you'd have to do to grow anyway. I, I think I would prefer just doing an indoor grow bed, but like I said, you can still. There's people who set up some pretty nice hydroponic systems. And like I said, I don't know enough about the solutions to know how natural they are or what. I'm sure it's good because there's a, there's a lot of people doing it and they consider it very healthy. Um, it's just not something I have a lot of experience with. I bought one little packet of the solution because I just wanted to try it one time. But you can actually get like the gallon jugs of liquid you pour in and and make the yeah. solution. I, like I, said, I just don't know a lot about it. And maybe I should do a little more research or just get somebody on that's doing it. But we, that's a good idea somebody says you, you don't know nothing let me come on your show and <laughs> tell you all about it please do i mean i'd like to know right. more about it be honest with you um i'm sure it's a viable solution though to growing food in the winter time but you do do aquaponics correct i do do aquaponics and i i, I enjoy aquaponics <laughs> i really do we um, fish too that's nice you can i mean i when i do it in the house i generally just use goldfish Okay. Um, but if I'm doing it outside in my big tank, I, I use fish that I can eat. We've done bluegill. I have a really detailed video on how you're using your goldfish. My daughter has goldfish and I'm thinking they need to work. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good video on, on uh, showing my system <laughs> and, and, and the blog post actually, um, uh, okay. lays out step by step in this in a parts list of everything. I put my indoor system together oh, with, parts. and I usually do not. Uh, put it up in the summertime i take it down the summer and i put it up in the winter because it's like why you know i don't see no right. point in in doing it and so i throw all the fish back in the pond and i fish them all out of there come winter time and put them in my aquaponics system this room i'm in right now usually it's setting right here and the reason oh, you're not okay. seeing it right here right now is because i'm not going to set it up this year <laughs> oh as well, I'm going to, I'm, I've determined that I'm going to turn the greenhouse into a aquaponics greenhouse and I'm going oh, to do it so in there are, instead. So you're going to heat your greenhouse this year. I am. And I'm going okay. to set up a full aquaponic system in there instead of doing it indoors. So in, in here, well, uh, I might just have to have some goldfish <laughs> somewhere. I, I like aquaponics for uh you know a lot of the same reasons that we like other indoor growing i mean it's food security um when you can't grow outside but so what vegetables did you grow in it i grew up just about everything that i grew outside i had okay. yeah i had because i had all my good grow lights i had a nice shelf system um all the grow lights but i had lettuce going in there i had um I had some root vegetables in there too. I had radish and, and turnip really? in there because I had some pretty deep beds. Um, I had, uh, what all did I have? I had some cherry tomatoes growing in there. I had a lot of herbs growing in there, different variety of herbs. Uh, I had several things, uh, kale and, and char growing in there. I had a lot nice. of stuff. I had a pretty big setup. I had a full shelf system uh, last year and uh, had a lot of stuff growing in there and it grew well. And the one thing I like about aquaponics too, is stuff grows fast. It's so it's nu nutrient rich. It just explodes. Also aquaponics doesn't use as much water as growing in soil. You think it's a system built from water, but you don't lose, you only basically lose it through evaporation and what little the plants take up, but there's not as much evaporation in a system like that. And the flow as there is the ground soaking it up and, and, and evaporation plus that. And you so, only use what the fish, you only use the fish poop. You don't have to like adjust pH or. You might have to at times. Okay. I was pretty fortunate. I didn't have a lot of issues with that. I've not really had any issues with that. Surprisingly, I don't know why, but you can run into issues with that. Um, some people have problems with that sometimes it seems like uh bigger systems have less of an issue with that so the bigger the system the more balanced it is smaller indoor systems tend to have more of an issue oh. the downside of aquaponics is it's definitely a more complicated system it takes some pumps it takes some piping it you know it just, your lights and everything and all of it working together uh in sequence to to produce this food so there is opportunity for failure there is um anyway so it can fail on you and plus the water balances with the ph and things like that i tested my ph frequently but i just never had any issues with it really um now my outdoor system uh operated a little different uh it was an ebb and flow system that um worked with a bell siphon 
So it didn't require any uh, power other than the, well, it did require a pump to pump up into the top, but that pump was constant. It never shut off. Uh, so it just, it doesn't take a big pump. It just fills up slowly. And then, then the, the bell siphon would kick, which is a, something that works naturally. If you've never seen how a bell siphon works, it's pretty neat. It's just a couple of big pieces of PVC. One sits inside the other. It's got some holes in it. And once oh. the water flows over the top pipe, it kicks that siphon and makes it flush, but it won't. But once it drains so far, so is it kind of like a toilet? It seals. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, it does it itself though is the difference okay. it will when it fills up it works kind of reverse of a toilet basically when okay. it fills up it opens and when it goes down it closes so then it starts filling back up again and then when it gets to the top it opens up again and it stays open until it's completely down uh which is like i said the opposite of a toilet pretty much on how that would work but it kind of sounds like that of course when i it, mention a toilet but that's well, the only thing i was thinking when you it's were pretty funny that. it kind of sounds like that when it flushes i mean it you know it the water dumps uh, down into the bottom tank uh when you're doing that i built mine out ibc tote um so it's called a chop and flip system my outdoor one now the indoor one i use fish tank i use i use a fish tank i use a shelf system that's the one i've seen a picture of is the indoor one the one with the fish tank. Yeah. I sent you a picture. Yeah. I think I sent you a picture of both of them, actually my outdoor IBC tank one that I had wrapped in wood. And then oh, the, okay. uh, that was the outdoor yeah. IBC tank. And then the indoor one, um, uh, is like I said, it's a fish tank. I think it's like a 55 gallon fish tank, uh, a shelf system. And then at the very bottom, you have your sump tanks, which would just, I just used, uh, totes, uh, just plastic totes for that. And that's the water would drain through the system down into there. It, kick on it would kick on fill the beds up and the um they had the pump on a timer and it would fill the beds up and it would flush the water back to the the fish tank and it had an overflow on it where it would come back down to the other tanks but then when those when those uh beds fill up then they would just the timer kicks off those beds finish draining i think i had it kicking on i can't remember now i have it in, in the blog post but i think it would run like 10 or 15 minutes an hour, maybe 10 minutes an hour or something like that. And um, I can't remember what the cycle was now. I'd have to look up my own blog post to figure out my cycle. Do I had it all written issues down. issues with the totes? Like you must have had to have gotten pretty strong totes. Well, I used two of them okay. uh, so it wouldn't over kind of overwhelm one. But there wasn't a lot. of. I mean, there's probably, they were probably half full of water at all times. Okay. They weren't completely full. But yes, you're right. There is a risk of that, of something collapsing. And if you do set something like that up in your house. Now, you see where I'm at right now. I'm actually out in my barn in a room right. that I've made if into a little office out in my barn. In your living room. You're... If that, that's right. If you put that up in a room in your house and something. Be... Yeah, exactly. Ooh, uh, yeah. You could have a problem. So you want to make sure that you set it somewhere where if there was some kind of a failure or just be extra careful that there won't be a failure by building something uh, really sturdy <laughs> let's put right. it that way uh, wow. but it it works really good you know it's just a system and, and i won't get into all i don't want to turn this to an aquaponics episode because you can definitely spend a whole episode talking about aquaponics other than to say i like doing it and it provides you a lot of food and uh, it's something that you can do year round but you can definitely do right. it, and you can do it anywhere you can set it up in an apartment um you know or anything all these methods i mean you can so grow food without a yard between aquaponics and a wicking bed do you know uh well wicking bed goes through the soil uh, okay. I, um, I yeah so you, yeah it, it, you have some kind of a filter system between the soil and the tank below and it yeah i mean i'm saying yeah i mean i've seen them built um yeah, but so i've I never built one, had done one. Okay. i haven't i've seen I've them considered built. it because it does use soil and of course we both have an affinity for so yeah i i like i do i like natural methods which i feel like aquaponics is closer right. to the natural method than hydroponics again we're probably gonna make some hydroponic people mad um, i'm sorry right. folks uh yeah, teach me I, I come mean, on I'm and teach us about it, it. we're i don't yeah. know <laughs> i'm not against it i just like for me it's too it's about i like things that i don't have to buy inputs for a lot like I'm right it, there's another good point and and input. exactly yeah where aquaponics, I feel like feeds itself. You got to buy food, uh, food for the fish. Now, if you have a big enough system and you're feeding tilapia, they're vegetarian fish that actually could eat stuff you're growing on the water. So possibly you don't even have to buy fish food for them. Um, but 
you know, so that's my only right. input into my aquaponic system is I buy fish food. Right. Um, now, if uh, you were growing hydroponics, I don't know that you could ever create your own minerals for your water to, so it doesn't, it seems like a system that's not very sustainable to me, but like I said, I don't know. There might be a way that you can do that. I don't I mean, know. And you could say that, I mean, everybody could say that about soil if you're buying amendments. And, but if you know, you're making I your own compost, yeah. you don't need right. it. Yeah. But we're, but we're talking about it. indoor yeah. growing and we're talking about buying soils for that. And like I said, yeah. that's why I wanted to make an option that you could sterilize your own soils if you wanted to do that. And it would be more sustainable for sure. And you, you True. know, I mean, if you don't care about having bugs in your house, you could bring the soil in. <laughs> but I don't uh, like it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, yeah. it does bring harmful bugs into it. It can bring, like I said, aphids and stuff like that in and, and harm yes, your actual I, crop. Yeah. So, right. Um, well, lots of options, though, for growing inside in the winter or in the city or, you know, yeah. in an apartment, wherever. And I think it's, in, you know, I think if we're talking sustainability, if we're talking about eating healthy, if we're, you know, when we're talking about, homesteading in places where people think that you can't be a homesteader, where a lot of people traditionally have said, you can't be a homesteader and live there. These options are perfect. I mean, right. yeah. these are all things you can do. Honestly, can do them year round. They don't have to be in yes. the winter, but right. you know, for us, it's turned into a winter thing. Cause I much prefer being out there in my yard doing stuff. Um, but you know, you could just, you could fill some small pots up and put them in a windowsill with some herbs and stuff in them. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't even have to be like these big, large grow beds. It doesn't have to be set up big grow light setups. You know, it doesn't have to be a full aquaponic system or hydroponic system. You can just have a, a pot in the windowsill. <laughs> it works. You know, yep, I've grown herbs sure. that way and stuff and it does, it does the trick. Yeah, I have too. We, unfortunately, and fortunately, I mean, there's double edged sword for this and maybe it's something people need to understand. We are invested in really expensive windows. Mm that the light restrictions black sunlight yes. because our because part of our house gets so hot so i mean if you have those kind of windows you are going to struggle more just using the sunlight that's coming through your windows yeah they block a lot of the ultraviolet yeah light and yep. things like that yeah it will it changes the spectrum and it actually makes stuff yeah. it makes it harder to grow stuff in a window you're right yeah, yeah i didn't think about why that i ended up having to get lights because you know if you're just using if you have an older house with older windows that doesn't that don't have all of that, then we have. What's funny is we have some of those newer windows like that in our kitchen, even. But it doesn't seem to affect my microgreens because microgreens right. I don't think take yeah. a lot of light. If you were doing yeah. fully mature plants, I think yeah, you need more. If you were doing tomatoes a, or peppers, yes, absolutely, they're going to need a more of a, a spectrum, spectrum range in the light. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So that's something to consider, also. But yeah. I. Honestly, LEDs have become so affordable, um, and they don't I use don't, a ton of electricity. That I can't remember. I mean, I'm sure you can look it up on there what the watt is on them, but they cannot be. They can't use that much. I have mine on all spring, like from I don't even know February till May, mm -hmm. and we don't see much of a bump in the electric bill. I mean, if any, yeah. it just depends on how much you're growing, I guess, and how many of yeah. them you got around your, well, your house. Have Eight to ten. I oh, usually really? have, I have eight yeah. four footers, and I usually have those going all for all my seedlings. Yeah, and it doesn't. You don't really notice it that much. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And now, okay, we didn't really get into that. How long do you leave your lights on for on any of your stuff you're growing indoors? The stuff I'm growing, like lettuces and stuff, only require like six to eight hours. But mm -hmm. um, like the tomatoes and peppers, those can require sixteen, eighteen mm -hmm. hours of sunlight or more. Yeah. So, yeah. You just have to do some research yeah. on that and find out the, the sunlight requirements on yeah. something and, like I that. I mean, and it's not the sun. It, there are lights. So I think they require just a little bit more than they would mm -hmm. if you were outside. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Lettuce, probably not. But yeah, anything with its freezing yeah. definitely requires I mean, requires obviously more. up here, we don't get 20 hours of sunlight. Yeah. And I think when I was, when I was reading about peppers, they were saying 16 to 20 hours. Well, yeah. we don't get that. Yeah. Anytime during that. Yeah. I was, when I had my lettuce in my basement, I remember I was leaving my lights on down there, I think for eight hours at a time. And then I'd shut them off for 12 and then do eight. And I was yeah. going back for like that. Uh, when I had my aquaponics up here last year, I believe I was going a full 12 hours. Oh, wow. Light on those because I did have some fruiting. I mean, I like cherry tomatoes in there okay. and things yeah. like that. So I was definitely doing a little bit more. But I also remember some of the herbs and stuff 
for like they were getting too much light because they were like browning and stuff. So, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, I think it was like cooking them a little bit. And they did not get hot necessarily, but I just think That's it was just the nice too. thing about the LEDs is they don't get hot. They don't get hot, but they, yeah. I think, mm. just having that much of the spectrum on them that long was kind of right. hurting them a little bit. Um, so there's a balance there. I mean, you could probably set timers on different ones for different mm. shelf layers and things like that. It, it take, it's just, it's, there's a little bit of a learning scale with everything and, and setting it up, but. You can keep it simple or you can get a little bit more yeah. complex. It's, you can start small. I mean, there's like. Grab a flower pot. <laughs> for us, like here, up here, we have a really cheap, um, oh, what do you call it? Box store that you can go to called Menards. And you can get these little shelves. I got mine a long time ago. I don't know what they are now, but they were like $24 and they're four foot. That's how I started mm-hmm. doing mine is they had four shelves and they were, I don't even think they're four foot. I think they're two feet wide. And you can put, you know, your grow lights on them and just that one little shelf. And I actually, what I did another year was we were doing a project in the basement, so I didn't have a lot of room. I actually got, my husband brought home from work, one of those rolling coat racks Mm -hmm. on hangers. We put the grow lights on hangers. We strapped them to hangers with zip ties on the top of the coat rack. And on the bottom, there was the shoe rack. We put the pots there and I just rolled that thing all over the basement out of the way when I didn't when I needed it out of the way and everything was right there we just kept it plugged in on an extension cord and we rolled it all over the basement <laughs> sounds perfect I love it yeah I love it and it was free yeah but, um, you so know, let me dig use, out the trash <laughs> yeah I mean you can use different shelving systems to grow more food or less food you can keep it in your kitchen you can put it in your yeah. basement absolutely I yep. it I mean, honestly, it's fun to do. And I guarantee you after just a few weeks in winter time, you're ready to start growing something again, you know, and it just gives you a perfect opportunity. And, and like I said, I got into this for health reasons and I didn't want to just for half of the year, I didn't want to revert back to eating garbage. You know, I wanted to keep some fresh food coming in, you know, and I didn't want to just eat from canned things that I'd canned and dehydrated and whatnot. I wanted some fresh food, some fresh greens and lettuces and salads and, you know, things like that. So I wanted to be able to grow you know, all winter. And so you, you figure out a way to do it. And these are some good ways, but it's nothing complicated. The only thing that's complicated in this, it would be the aquaponic system. And right. no one needs to start out there for sure. If you're not doing any other kind of growing, don't skip to that. Uh, start with just some pots and some, you know, lettuce or whatever. And, a, and a, a, you can get those long, longer pots, like those two footers and get, yeah. get you like yeah. a two foot grow light to hang right over the top of it. I mean, that's perfect. And it's amazing. You get two of those, that's a lot of lettuce you're going to grow, you know, and you don't have to let it get full size. You can like harvest it and uh, like I said, succession plant it and, and kind of go back and forth yeah. with it and stuff. And you can provide yourself the, probably a salad a day out of a couple of those long pots and like it's that. it's great. I think it's too, it's a fun project to do with kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can yep. go, they can grow their own lettuce and cut it for, for their dinner. And I think, I mean, when kids get involved in the garden, they're more interested in eating healthy because they grew it. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. I'm excited to see what I can grow in the greenhouse this year, even though that's a little different. That's not my zone zero garden by any means. It's it's probably more of a it's probably a lower zone than my basement. Though. My, <laughs> I definitely go in there way more than I go in my basement. <laughs> I I'm still envious of your greenhouse. So well, I did enjoy it. Nothing with it for the last 12 months. I didn't do anything with it last winter, and do anything with it this whole year uh, so far. So I'm gonna have I, to send you a video of how my friend heats his. Um, he has a hoop house, Mm -hmm. like an Elliot Coleman style hoop house that he grows in, but he heats, how he heats his is with, um, jars, just tons and tons of glass jars. The problem is I got a small greenhouse and I can't really put a lot of thermal mass in there because of, which is why I think I mentioned this on the last episode. I think that having an aquaponic system in there and having the, if I dig the, the, the bit, you know, some ponds basically on the sides, if I just dig down like three feet deep and a couple feet wide, those are in the ground. That's going to create thermal mass. It's a lot of water in there. Plus it'll be flowing up. And I just think it'll be easier to heat uh, with that kind yeah, of a thermal mass in there. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. And I'm actually just, I've been, even today, I've been racking my brain on some ways to heat it. I, I've actually been seriously thinking about trying to rig, make me a, like a small wood stove out of a propane tank. 
to go in there, like cut like it, a cut a lid out of the front, make me a door. Stove? And no, not necessarily. Actually, a wood stove, but just make it small, like the size of a propane, okay. like a like a small propane tank, and actually try to just wood heat it a lot of the time because it does get expensive. I was heating oh, yeah. it with electric, and yeah. Now I do. I'll do like bubble wrap insulation. I'll take like bubble wrap and insulate it and stuff, and it it helps a lot, but it still isn't enough. It it takes a lot to heat a greenhouse because they're just they're not and insulated. Are you at getting all. a lot of solar aspect through that right now? And yeah, I then? mean it's completely okay. out in the sun all day, every day. I mean it's okay. got all day sun. It has zero you guys shade. Get sun down there in the winter? There's some, yeah. I mean oh. it gets light. We'll say that way. One of the- one of the bad things about northern Michigan, we we just don't see the sun once. Winter just depends comes. on the winter, I guess. There's some winters it's really really cloudy, and some where it's sun but cold. You know, it's funny how that's sometimes that's the coldest days or the sunny days. It's so clear. Oh yeah, and it's just it makes it super cold. You know, where the cloud cover will kind of hold some heat in. Um, but yeah, it's uh, winter's tough. Winter's so hard on me. I have to grow something because it's the only that keeps me sane. <laughs> I mean, the one year it was worth, I heated that thing and I grew tons of food out there one winter and it was worth every dime I spent because it kept my sanity because I was able, I mean, there was a foot of snow on the ground. I'm sitting in the greenhouse with stuff growing all around me and it was about 65 degrees in there. And I didn't care what it cost me because it kept me, it kept me sane, you know, sanity is important. And you know, if your grocery bills cheap, well, nothing. (laughs) <laughs> it definitely wasn't. I mean, I'm growing like a lettuce and stuff in there, but right. you know, I was fine with it. <laughs> I did have like a, a cherry tomato vine that I'd vined up over. It was hanging down from the top of the greenhouse and stuff. And I had like these cherry tomatoes up above my head growing. That was kind of cool. I vined it up along the side and was hanging down off the top of the greenhouse. And I it was really like, want to find a way to do a greenhouse. Put a snow outside. <laughs> <laughs> not sure I want to pay the electric bill. So I'm going to have to yeah, figure out that's somehow, what, like maybe like a Wallampini or something. That's why I'm just kind of thinking of maybe a small wood stove of some kind I can rig up in there and and at least at night throw a three or four logs in there and kind of supplement the heat, you know, to where it just didn't run all the time because right. it does run all the time. I think I also got electric heater shut off a whole winter. <laughs> I mean, it just, it right. ran the entire time to keep it. And then there was days if it was super, super cold, like it would keep it it wouldn't keep it above 40 hardly it would get really cold right yeah that's that's i can't imagine heating that (laughs) yeah it's it's not easy so it's something you got to consider i i don't know like i said i think what that's why i'm thinking the aquaponic system could only help that you know so aquaponics and a wood stove for sure yeah i think those two things could go really well together i it's just not it's just not a big greenhouse you know so i just don't know how much room on type of that you need some fodder trees that you can coppice for your wood if you i I have some i have a big pile of limbs that i cut off a mulberry tree here just the other day and i'm like that'll be perfect for my wood stove i'm gonna put it in there there you go. I actually have a wood stove in my garage, but yeah, I don't ever go it's in my probably actual a little garage. Bit bigger though, right? I actually made it out of a barrel, out of a 55 gallon barrel. I bought one of them kits that you put, it has a lid and you put the fluid on the back. And then I just took a 55 gallon barrel and it has the legs. It comes with the legs and the door and the, the part, part of the pipe. And I just put it all together on a 55 gallon barrel and it heated my garage for years. And then when I got this barn, I hardly ever go in my garage anymore. <laughs> there is just something about wood heat in the middle of winter. Yeah, I wish we had it in our house. We don't have a wood stove in our house, we but I wish we one, did. But it's in our basement, so it's like a wood burning stove, mm-hmm. and you can't see the fire. And there's something about seeing they're, the fire. They're and more efficient, the though. They, I, it's very efficient, very, very yeah. efficient. But it's it's um, you lose all the ambience. I like the wood. It feels different, though. It, it definitely has more of a direct heat. It just feels different. Yeah to sit near a wood stove or anything. So, well, Rachel, anything else for the day? Do we have anything else on the, uh, on the list here? I think that's it. We've gone a while, I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. You put a couple questions. I don't think we need to get into no, the questions. No, I think we've <laughs> okay. gone, we've gone quite a while already. So yeah, we haven't even looked at the time. All right. Well, folks, uh, until next week, happy homesteading and God bless. And grow where you're planted. Looking around, I finally see, I think I need a change. The rat race, I want to flee, my world I'll rearrange. I'm getting back to the roots of how it's meant to be. Growing gardens, picking fruit, raising livestock, living free. from their land like
like we do here every day Snapping beans like Grandma did Sitting on her front porch Hunting and fishing like a kid Once you've done all of your chores It's a modern homestead Build a modern homestead Country or city, there's a way to make this change you gotta start today